Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Andrew and in this video we have something different and this is Nokia N95, 8 gigabytes. Actually two of them. The both phones are in a bad condition. The one is not working. I mean the motherboard is dead. But this phone has some working parts. And the other phone is working. But the flex cable is bad. One of the speakers, bad sliders, bad case and etc. In this video, I'm going to back at least one in life again and bring back some stuff. So let's start. And couple of words about this early smartphone. Yes, the Nokia N95 is one of the early smartphones. This is the Symbian S60 platform, something before Android and iOS that we know today. The teardown of Nokia N95 is very simple. The battery is removable. The case is easily removable as well. There are very few screws and basically this is all. But anyway, I had to be very careful while disassembling. Because spare parts are very hard to find nowadays, especially original parts. The both phones are full of dust and dirt. And also notice a liquid damage and rust to the boat, which is very expected. Well, and all the parts are separated. But now let's do some cleaning. I place a plastic serving plate and paper napkin. And the first on the list is the phone board. I start with a soft cleaning brush. And with brush, I clean the major dust and dirt. And with alcohol, I wash the entire board from the both sides. And this is the Nokia 95 motherboard after cleaning. It's looking a little bit better. Here we can see how the things were made. Compared to today's smartphones, maybe it looks simple, but here still we have a lot of stuff. A single 8 gigs memory chip, FM radio receiver, infrared, Bluetooth, dual ARM CPU with 3D graphics and etc. After I finish with the motherboard, I move to clean the other parts and components. First, I use brushes, isopropyl alcohol, tweezers and 800 grit sandpaper to remove some rust from the case. Many times I got questions, why do I use isopropyl alcohol instead of some other types? The isopropyl alcohol is different and with a different molecule structure. And the isopropyl alcohol is not power conductive, I mean cannot transfer electricity or with the other words cannot cause a short circuit to the electronics. And with this is much safer to clean and wash some electronics. Always cleaning needs to be done without power source to the device that is cleaning. No matter, is this some smartphone, laptop, computer or any other motherboard. And here I'm done with cleaning the electronics and some parts of the case. Now let's move to the back case. The rubber from the back case is pretty sticky and this can be fixed with washing. In a plastic container, I put a warm water. And then using a brush and dish soap, slowly I remove the sticky layer. After washing, the case is looking better, isn't sticky anymore, but is not good as well. So I decided to make some modifications here. Using tweezers, I remove all the buttons from the case. The buttons are still shiny and fine, and we can use it later. Except the case, the slider is not looking good as well. The paint is scratched and faded, but the slider is made from metal and the things are easier here. Using a flat scalper, carefully I remove the flex cable from the slider. Now using 800 grit sandpaper and water, I sand the case. I have to remove some layers of the paint. And also, I have to make surface smooth. To the back door or the battery cover, I found one small crack. And here, using a super glue, I stick the broken part. Now I took protective paper tape and I start with taping.
After I finished with taping, I took black made spray and I paint some parts of the case. Also after painting, I bake the case in oven for about 30 minutes at a temperature of 50 Celsius and I left the case for about 24 hours until the paint gets dry and hard. Also for this phone, I bought another front case and another keys and keyboard. This is a used case, but it's an original case. I found a new case as well, but the quality was very bad. Once again, I cross over small cleaning. And finally, the N95 is ready for assembling. I start with returning all the buttons to the case. Because the flex cable needs to be fixed to the case. Here, I apply two-sided tape. The cable looks fine and everything is fitting just well. The slider is simple. From the both sides are two plastic bumpers and two metal rails. The only thing that I don't like about the Nokia 95 is the slider. Over time, the slider starts being loosey, but this is easy fixable, using some tape or by changing the plastic side bumpers. And the slider looks fine and it feels solid and I really didn't hope to get some pretty good result here. Now, let's continue with assembling this phone. And I'm almost done. I place the battery and the last part from the case. This is the moment of truth. The phone is working. And I'm really glad to hear the startup sound. And after I do all these changes, this is the final result. few words about. The Nokia N95 8GB was released back in October 2007. With 8 gigs of memory, a 2.8 display, a 5 megapixel camera, Wi-Fi, Symbian operating system, dual ARM CPU and many many other options, this smartphone was a really big deal. But also, the N95 was the last of the line. 2007 was the year when the first iPhone got released and the game starts changing. But anyway, the N95 was very ahead of anyone, I mean in terms of specs, abilities and functionality. The camera was amazing. 
And these are actual photos of this phone. I mean, I captured these photos using this N95. It's very respectable, even after so many years. This phone has a lot of built-in apps, like navigation maps, quick coffees, PDF, and etc. But also the Symbian apps were everywhere. Even today we can find a lot of apps for this phone. Because the 3G network is still supported, the calls and text messages are working even today. I restored this Nokia because I never had 8 gigs version. I actually used N95, the classic one. I don't have a full video about it, but I have a short video only. Also restore these phones, because I want to back in function something from time and to mess around with some old apps and games. By the way, this is how we used to transfer some files through the infrared. And to the both phones I have some collection of games that probably many of you are still remember. I mean games like Creatures from the Deep, a nice fishing game, you're going from spot to spot to find different fishes, to complete some tasks and etc. The Crush Nitro card is one that we used to play on PlayStation, but the Nokia bought this phone to mobile devices. The game is not the same as the original one, but it's very similar and pretty cool to play. Also on this phone I play some other games, System Rush Evolution, Resident Evil and other games. Maybe the Nokia Engage was a failure, but it was a big change in mobile gaming. Well, and this is all about this Nokia N95 8GB. This is an old smartphone and probably very obsolete for today's standards, but it's still good if you want to play some older games and mess with the older apps. And this phone, it's a part of a very nice history. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give some ideas or inspiration to back some stuff in function again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.